I went through this whole exercise with myself of like, how do I want to feel in this life? I mean, this life is so incredibly short and Mm -hmm. I've spent enough of my life giving it to other people that does not serve me. Right. You know, and recognizing how much power that I have over my own life and the life that I can create for myself, um, that we all can create for ourselves, you know. We are back in the studio of Hope to Hustle, and we have my amazing friend, Ashley Holt. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming all the way here. I mean, you flew in from... Connecticut. Connecticut, yep. which is far, but you are used to, you're a travel bee like me, so you're constantly on the go. Yeah, on the go. I like moving around and going to places. Not and... sitting still like me. Yeah. It's perfect. Yep, you know. <laughs> and that's why I got these swivel chairs. They're like, do you want to have... Uh, just, you know, regular chairs to sit still. I'm like, there is no way. If I cannot swivel or move around, it's not going to work for me. I know. I'm a fidgeter. And this is a good swivel too. It's like mm-hmm. nice and greased yeah, just up. Like, just like a little bit, you know, so <laughs> get it out, get it out of, yeah, my system. But um, thank you so much for coming on. I am so excited to have a conversation with you today. You are so inspiring and you do so many amazing things. I mean, you are, I mean, and I can attest now because I have had your amazing baking and the cake that you had made for uh, my parents' anniversary. I mean, that was just phenomenal and so good and so beautiful. Um, and you, you've been on Netflix shows, uh, Bake Squad, mm-hmm. Cake Boss. That's so exciting. I'm so, one, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I mean, I can only imagine everything that goes on behind the scenes and in your life to be where you are today and like to have everything that you have and that you do and you are a mom. So I acknowledge you for, for all of those things. How did you get into it? Like, have you always been baking or is that a newer thing? No, the very first cake I ever made was my little brother's second birthday cake. We were 17 years apart. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that was the very first cake I made. And at that point in my life, I just graduated high school. Um, I was getting into modeling, like something that came out of nowhere. And I started working in this industry. I'm like, all right, this is pretty fun. But it was so emotionally draining for me. Mm -hmm. And where I would keep falling back on when I would come back after like a grueling day on set is into the kitchen and then I just start baking something. It was so just relaxing and peaceful and it was a nice, safe place for me. Okay. How old were you? This was in high, right out of high school? Yeah, 18. Okay. And what did you make for his cake, his second birthday? Yeah. yeah did you uh-huh. decorate? Is it like? I did. It's, it's just a single tier. It has polka dots, a awful um, bow that I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to find and show you a picture. Um, it's, it's really, it's sweet looking back on it because it's, right. it's, I never, ever could have imagined where cake would have taken me in my life. Right. Like the journey that something like flour, butter, and sugar, mm-hmm. I mean, what that, what doors that that has opened up and what doors that I created for myself. Yeah. Like the paths, you know, um, it's so easy to, to pick any job and, and just kind of do your playbook of okay, I'm going to, I, I like baking. I like doing cakes. I'm going to be a pastry chef and I'm going to stay in the restaurants and, mm-hmm. um, you know, work up to an executive pastry chef and sticking like the path that has always been there before you. It's like, okay, this is the way that it should go. But right. I knew that, I don't know. I just wanted to do it different and I wanted to find other opportunities that existed outside of just the four walls that I was in. Mm-hmm. So when I started decorating um, at this point, so I was modeling and I was decorating for like an escape. Um, And then when I left modeling, then I had to do something Mm -hmm. like, all right, time to pick a career. Yeah. (laughs) Got to do something. So a big girl job. Exactly. I was like, let me go tour this culinary school. I was, I was torn between either doing hair or going to culinary school. And when I went to culinary school and I saw the pastry chef flat ice a cake. I was just like, oh my gosh, that looks so relaxing and so wonderful. And I was just hooked from that point. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Was this in Connecticut? Um, no. So actually I've been, I've moved around a lot. Um, this, where I went to school, it was in Louisville, Kentucky. 
Oh, wow. I don't even know if the school's around anymore. I think it got like shut down for, I don't know, something bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> a culinary school in Kentucky, was it like a small little school? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It was a small school, but it was it was close to where I lived yeah. at the time. And um, I went in for a couple, oh, gosh, so crazy thinking back, trying to like recall these memories because it feels like a different lifetime ago, you know? Um, but when I got to school, I went for two semesters and then I couldn't get um, approved for financial aid for the third one. I couldn't get a co-signer. I didn't have any money to put myself through school. So I was kind of forced to quit and just figure it out myself. So from that point, I was getting a, just looking where I could find work to get mm-hmm. as much experience and like real world on the job training as possible. Of course, I went to the school of YouTube, <laughs> taught me everything, <laughs> but I just went from working at like a little cupcake shop and then going to a bakery that did a few more things and then a bakery that specialized in cakes. And then I went to um, a hotel that had a really nice pastry department. So keep like going up the ladder and challenging myself to learn a little bit more. I write any place or at any point where I would get comfortable in a job, then I would quit and get a new one to challenge me. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just a culmination of all of these places and experiences in the world, this cake world of mine that has been able to really create like a pretty awesome, awesome job and career for myself. And it's like when people ask me, what do you do? And it's hard for me to just say that, okay, I'm, I'm a cake artist. Right. One, like it feels, it still feels like imposter syndrome, even just being able to confidently say, I'm a cake artist. Right. Because like, for whatever reason, I mean, I am, I get so in my head with everything anyways, but I always think, well, what is the other person hearing that thinking about what I'm telling them? Right. What do you think people would think hearing cake artist? I don't Sometimes, honestly, I feel like if, if someone, I mean, especially where I live in Connecticut, there's, there are just a lot of very um, established, just very um, accomplished people And sometimes I don't feel like I'm good enough Mm -hmm. whenever it's like a finance person, which to me, I'm no disrespect. That's like the most boring job that I could ever imagine. So so for me to be like, feel like I'm not good enough because I'm a cake, just a cake artist. I forget all the time the experiences that I've created for myself. Mm -hmm. And when I have to go back, like, Ashley, why are you selling yourself short? Like you have these shows, you've, you have bought yourself a house being a cake artist. Like it's, it's it's an art and it's, you know, and the creativity side of it, but I can see what you mean. And that's hard to get out of that. I'm just, you know, right. You know, and it's like, no, okay. Eliminate the word just, and I am this and being able to proudly say that. And maybe just people don't understand what it entails. I mean, I've seen firsthand your creativity. And you know what's crazy, Ashley, is when I watched you do this cake, and I know it's it has not been your first one, you know, and it's not going to be your last one, but you have a look in your eye when you are doing your artwork. Mm-hmm. And I saw that. I saw that in you. And I was really curious to know, like, how did you get into this? Because this is very unique and the detail and the thought that you put into it was just phenomenal. And you had shared a little bit with me. And I thought that, you know, especially with the field of work that I, I work in with mental health and substance abuse and um, some people finding an escape for themselves, you know, and for you to be able to and you said when you were younger, that's kind of where it started, right? It was like your safe spot Mm -hmm. of going to it. So like, if you don't mind, I'm just curious to know a little bit more of that. Like what would be going on that that was your safe haven? Um, Thank you. First of all, very, very sweet. Um, Whenever I'm in these create, like in this creative zone, like nothing Nothing else exists. Mm -hmm. Time doesn't exist. Like it is me, my hands and my mind, like all working together to Mm -hmm. create this art. And and that is what it is. And it doesn't matter if it's made of cake, buttercream, chocolate. It's edible art. And 
it's I pour my soul into these creations. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've been artistic since I was a kid. Like I, I'm constantly creating mm-hmm. something, no matter if I'm walking in the woods and I see a couple twigs, I'll weave them together with a leaf. Like mm-hmm. I have this this need to constantly create something. And whenever I was able to merge that that creativity with with baking and and when I was modeling, the baking was something that I would bring to set and people would compliment what I was making. And but on the flip side, I was also like getting picked apart physically because me not being good enough physically, if I didn't fit in the clothes or like my face looked weird in the the pictures. Modeling is a really hardcore job. Right. Um, A lot of people, you know, think it's just glitz and glam and full of these shallow people that it's like, that's not, that's not what it is. It's, Mm -hmm. it really can take a toll, especially, especially being a vulnerable, um, young girl. Right. Oh, I could imagine. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I'm not knowing like spinning off on the question that you even asked me, but Whenever I needed, I needed to find something to do and where I found my release and where I was most confident and at peace and centered with myself is when I was in this creative space. Mm-hmm. So I had to figure out there's got to be, there. this has to work for me. I, there's got to be a way that I can make a living while being an artist, while being creative. And, and the jobs kind of just like kept compounding on each other, the opportunities and, and the, like the swan cake that I made you, I still get in my head before every single creation, like, oh, well, I've never made a big swan cake. Like what if yeah. it's not going to come out good? And, but it does, it comes out great. Mm-hmm. And I like being able to sit back and look at a piece of art that I'm creating. Like, I think we individually need to be more of our own cheerleaders. Right. Because we try and, like, make ourselves small. Oh, I don't know. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. And, like, no, really? That's fucking awesome. And right. Exactly. What you made is amazing and you should be proud of yourself and exactly. you can celebrate it. Yes. Yes. Um, and yeah. I agree because I feel like I struggle sometimes with that. Um, you know, it's like I love helping people. But I feel like – and you and I were talking a little bit about this. But I feel like that's all I'm known for and – sometimes I feel like it can be in a dark place, you know, Mm. like I feel like I work in a dark space sometimes and like there's so much joy in beautiful outcomes through recovery. And for that, I push hard and continue to work hard, but there's this other side of me and sometimes it's like, okay, but I want to share those things. I'm not, you know, again with the, the just the Mm -hmm. addiction specialist. Um, and I know that primarily that's what I do for work, but the creativity side, same, you know, it's like my mind, we were talking about this. If we're not spinning 10 plates at one time, mm-hmm. then our minds can go in a bad place. And it's like, I, we function better under chaos, mm-hmm. um, and under stress. And that, that part never stops. It's constantly creating. And it's like, okay, once I start one project, I'm already thinking of the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that about you because you are you're the same. And I mean, you're just so thoughtful and you put so much thought in work into even these bracelets. Like, thank you so much. Like I Aww. love, I love these. And you just and you know me and you know the colors that I love. And like you you put so much heart and soul into the work that you do, you know, and the swan. I remember posting the swan cake and people are like, Why did you pick a swan? Like, I don't understand what that means. And it was such a sentimental thing. I mean, instantly when my mom saw it, I mean, she she started crying because she knew, you know, and it was, I was in rehab when my stepdad proposed to her at the sardine factory in Monterey and he had the ring and the ice swan. And I was not able to be a part of that very special moment. My mom had been single for gosh, I don't know, 12 years, you know, we, she raised us on her own. And so I missed something that was so special to her, but to fast forward for their tenure and I am here, I'm present, not just physically, but mentally I'm here as well to be able to participate, um, and be a part of a very special time. And yeah. that swan cake was everything, you know, and through the journey, you know, she overcame breast cancer and you incorporated that. And so it was just, 
the memory of that cake is going to last everyone who was there that day a lifetime. And that I'm sure is for everybody who has had the pleasure to experience your artwork, you know, with their birthdays or whatever it is that they're celebrating. And I think that that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But I could imagine, well, I have to ask, have you ever like dropped a cake or because I mean, you spend days on these art pieces. Weeks. Weeks. Months sometimes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you travel with the cake in I suitcases. Do. Like I can't. I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I, you'll ask any cake decorator, what's your least favorite part of mm-hmm. the job? And they'll be like the delivery. Uh, so let me just make it more painful on myself and travel mm-hmm. across the world <laughs> to deliver a cake. Um, but no, thank you for saying that. That really is like, that's why I do what I do is to be able to share in these experiences with my clients and Mm -hmm. be able to grab these beautiful moments in time in their lives. And I love the opportunity to be able to pop into those lives for that event and be able to be a part of it um, by way of my art and, and just baking Mm -hmm. for them. I find find it to be so special and yeah, that it is going to be something that y'all remember um, forever. And that's so, that's so special to me. I mean, I always try and take a little piece. I still owe you a swan sculpture, by the way. <laughs> I always try and take a little piece of every single um, cake that I make because it's hard for me to let them go because mm-hmm. I become so attached to them. Right. Yeah. And no, then – Don't for, cut it. Don't eat it, please. Yeah. Right. I know. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm constantly challenging myself like with new – how can I how can I get better? What can I learn next? And then through the evolution of just art in general, it's like, well, what – other like what other mediums can I work with that are a little more long lasting Mm -hmm. so that's where I get into ceramics Mm -hmm. when I get into wood carving like other art forms which is I feel like where I'm at in my in my life right now is like wanting to find what can I get my hands on that is going to last longer than a photograph Mm -hmm. and a memory Mm -hmm. now since you have turned you know, baking into your career and you're very successful at that. Do you still find that as your safe place and what you do for you? Are you finding that now you need a little bit of a break from your career and trying to find other safe places for yourself to break away? You know, like for me, I love my career, but I definitely have to have some boundaries Mm -hmm. with it because that's all I do all day long. Um, that I'm trying to find other healthy ways to unplug Mm -hmm. and be there for myself too. Um, So what does that look like for you? Well, that's just how it always goes, right? It's like when you you have a passion and you want Mm -hmm. to start a business and then you get burned out because you're just doing all the other BS that's involved in it. And like, so for a long time, I mean, I got so extremely burned out when I had my bakery in Brooklyn. Mm. Um, you know, on, on paper, it's like the coolest thing. I know I'm still very proud of that period of my life. And, but I got, I got very burned out because it was all, you know, just managing my team and so right. many bills and just all the logistics. And it, I was taken away from, from what I started it. Or I was taken away from why I started it, which is the creation and, Sure, I get it. You can't live in that creative space. Like, I'm just going to, like, decorate a cake and la, la, la. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, pay all the bills. Like, it doesn't work like that. I understand that. But I need a time to be able to step away and just recalibrate myself. And and now when – because I took a couple years off and, you know, would take small orders here and there. But I came back setting those boundaries and saying, Mm -hmm. I'm going to – accept only the orders that are inspiring to me and that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I am able to confidently and, you know, with appreciation, be able to say no to orders and not feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. Like there was something in me that always is that people please that I'm still trying to just squash and say, thank you for Mm -hmm. your service, but you can stay in my 20s. Like, we're good. Um, Yeah, but it was hard for me to even have boundaries around clients, people I didn't even know. And Mm -hmm. my schedule would be packed with other orders. Someone would come in with just a generic kid's birthday cake, and I felt like I had to take it. But I kept saying yes, and it just kept making me more and more overwhelmed Mm -hmm. and buried um, with just the to-dos. But yeah, now I feel like I've 
recalibrated. I just built myself a studio in my garage that is like my little creative haven. And when I'm working on projects now, they're the projects that I want to work on and that I'm inspired Mm -hmm. by. And just, yeah, I think that takes, um, it's a mix of just patience and trust and surrender, you know, of saying like, I am trusting that I can say no to this job, no to this paycheck, and everything's going to be fine. I don't mm-hmm. need that because it's right. not aligned with what I'm wanting to do. Right. And when I make the, that choice to say no, it's like the universe always wants to come in and check. It's like, hey, are you really on like on your yeah. track right now? Are you really focused? But when I'm able to stay focused and do the things that are aligned with like my higher purpose and bigger picture goal, mm-hmm. when I say no, I'm rewarded with more things that are mm-hmm. in line with with the goals that I'm setting for myself. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that crazy how it's like, okay, am I going to be okay if I say no to this? Do I need to take this on? And then you don't, and then everything still unfolds the way it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. And you don't usually regret it and think, oh my gosh. I mean, I mean, of course, we always have some regrets, but, you know, being able to, I mean, and that's important. I mean, it's, you've been doing this for how long? 15 years. Yeah. And it's like you're still learning those boundaries. Yeah. You know, I know I am. I've been working in my field for 11. And I feel like just now I'm starting to really pay attention and be in tune with it mm-hmm. and recognize, okay, no, I'm going to say no to this. And yes, I'm going to – I mean, my husband always tells me you need to learn to say no because I have a really hard time with that. But I feel like I'm getting better and trying to prioritize and balance my life as best that I can. Um do you think we're ever going to have it figured out? Probably not. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I like to tell myself and think that I'm doing a good job at figuring it out. Um, but probably not because our minds don't know how to not create. So I'm sure they're, it's going to drive us crazy because we're, we take on realistically probably more than we should. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something also trying to recognize – and and work on that. Like, okay, it's a goal. And my thing is if I have a goal in mind, I need to put it into action mm-hmm. and I need to make it happen and come true. Um, I don't like it just to be a thought. That will drive me crazy. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I overload myself a little bit. And then I, you know, stretch myself thin and then I get frustrated. And then I'm pulling my hair out and mm-hmm. then I'm like, I'm doing too much. Well, it's like, well, you took all this on upon yourself. <laughs> so... It's hard. It's definitely hard. Um, Well, that's why, like, you want to say yes to a bunch of things. And with me, I 100% have ADHD. I've mm -hmm. been dealing with it since I was a young kid. And it is a constant, a constant struggle of like me getting so excited about all these other things. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, say I'll um, start building in my, building something in my studio. And then I get distracted by a piece of paper that I see on the wall. And I'm like, you know, what? Let me uh, actually paint something to go there. It's just like this nonstop cycle. And then uh-huh. I'll, I'll step back and look at the tornado that I just created. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, hold on a second. Yeah. So it's I'm constantly having to keep myself in check of um, that recentering and refocusing. And it's hard because I want to do so many things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it seems unfair that we have to choose one. But it's like we I can't just give myself just, you know, scatter myself to all these places because then – that's what I'm going to remain being is just scattered. And right, right. So it's hard to pick that, that one thing, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't think I could ever just pick one thing, you know, I would, it's like a, it's like a few different things, but that's, what's been nice about having a team. Um, and, and, and it's hard. You had said it earlier with once you turned your passion into a business Mm -hmm. and that I think most business owners can attest that they're no longer doing what they were passionate about because now you're wearing different hats owning a business. Mm -hmm. All the things that have nothing to do with your creativity and passion. Now you're trying to train your team to do their job just as passionately as you do your job. Which is so hard. So hard, almost impossible, Mm -hmm. you know, and trying to find that team that is in alignment of what you believe in so deeply is very, very difficult. I mean, it's taken me years to be able to find somewhere I'm like, okay, 
I trust some of my upper management team because I know that they are in alignment with me and they are going, they are very capable of handling this situation. But it's hard to just hand that over, especially when it's your baby, yeah. you know. But what I'm loving now, too, is that luckily I do have such a good team that is in alignment with me and they're able to say, Sheree, go ahead and just create because they know I have that side of me mm-hmm. and that's not going to turn off and it's not going to go away. Um, but and then being a mom, it's hard. I mean, do you ever get mom guilt? Oh, constantly. Yeah. Constantly. But that's like – where I'm at in my career right now is so different in a place that I couldn't even have imagined for myself since like before COVID when I was so burned out with my shop. Um, I was working full time in the city at the Today Show because um, I work behind the cameras too in production as a culinary producer mm-hmm. and food stylist. So wearing all these hats and uh, anyways, I was so burned out with that. With that, and But now I'm able, like I was saying earlier, to be more selective and to take a step back and say, hold on, what do I – want to create. And the the past two years, I did massive amounts of therapy and just self-reflection and to understand, like, I was so incredibly overwhelmed and burned out. How did I get there? How do I prevent getting back to that place? Right. It was so unhealthy. Right. Um, So I just started manifesting. It's like, what kind of life do I want for myself? Mm -hmm. And removing the needing to figure out what is that one thing. It's like, I go in. I'm like, well, how do I want to feel? I want to feel creative and productive. I want to most importantly feel like have a life where I can see my daughter, where I can be home, where I can still travel, but not too much. I went through this whole exercise with myself of like, how do I want to feel in this life? I mean, this life is so incredibly short and Mm -hmm. I've spent enough of my life giving it to other people that does not serve me. Right. You know, and recognizing how much power that I have over my own life and the life that I can create for myself, um, that we all can create for ourselves, you know. It's like Mm -hmm. I want to build this studio so I can be at home more and film content in there so I can see my daughter more because I was gone all the time. I was missing her growing up. Right. And it was it's a ton of mom guilt. But then on the flip side, I'm also a single mom and I have to make these sacrifices. Right. So that's just part of it. It's Mm -hmm. like – there's always – it's never going to be just okay. I don't th- – like mm-hmm, – right. I, I don't mean to sound like – I don't mean that I'm like a negative right. way. It's like there's – we're always going to find something to complain about if we are looking hard enough. Right. Exactly. And that's where, you know, my, my favorite word is just balance. Yeah. You know, because I feel like, no, maybe I couldn't be at – every single practice, Mm -hmm. you know, and and sometimes I'll feel guilty because I see some parents and they're at every single practice and I'm like, well, that's not me because I I have to work or I'm traveling, but I'm not going to miss a game. I will be there for the game because I, we have to make those sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And so trying to balance it out to where I'm putting myself, dispersing myself equally in different areas to that I feel comfortable with because I know what it's like to have put too much focus on work and too much focus on, you know, just family and not work. And then it's like, okay, trying to find that, you know, fine line where, okay, I feel comfortable in all these areas. Um, but it's hard. And I think we just have to keep soul searching and, and being open-minded to that. And therapy is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love, I love therapy. I love doing um, soul searching and being more in tune with myself because we're also growing. You yeah. know, we don't have all the answers and we're entering different phases in our lives. Um, and our kids are entering different phases in their lives. Constantly changing. Mm. Exactly. So I asked my grandma, I was like, Grandma, do we ever get to a point in life where we just have it figured out and these yeah. like trivial things that we're stressing out mm-hmm. about don't happen anymore? And she's like, No, honey. Yeah. It just changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm. it's like right when you get comfortable and okay, life is like kind of peaceful and good right now. And then yeah, the kids get older and they start their period or yeah. who who knows? Um, yeah, it's this constant, constant change and meditation helps me mm-hmm. immensely. Yes. To just present myself and just enjoy the moment. Like right. of whatever that chaos may be mm-hmm. in the time. Mm-hmm. It's like these beautiful moments of building as much as I can pick apart maybe 
things in my present life that I like, oh, you know, I, I should be doing this. I try and take should out of my vocabulary, but yeah. it's still very much there. <laughs> should and just. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, just that pressure, you know, mm-hmm. it's like being an entrepreneur, um, being self-employed, all these things, it's like feeling that comparison that right. just we just cannot help but to do sometimes. Mm-hmm. But when I'm able to recenter myself and just like be in the present moment, I'm just like, okay, well, this is the building block. I'm going to be looking back on this time at you know, in 10 years. I'll be looking back on my present, present Ashley right now, just so proud of all the work that I'm presently doing, even if I don't have certain um, uh, present like tangible rewards from from that. I know that right. it is – I'm laying the foundation and building the blocks on a daily basis and constantly putting one foot in front of the next to be able to set myself up for the life that I've always dreamed of and that I'm mm-hmm. like dr- like I'm creating my dream life presently. Right. And for your daughter – I mean, your daughter, she's five. She's five, yeah. Yeah. Um. And did I mean I know she's really young still, but especially girls. I mean they're so they're so smart, and they know. I mean, does she ask you questions about work or what foundation do you try to set for her, knowing that you know it is a little bit different lifestyle when you have a single mom that's traveling a lot for yeah. work. You know, that's it's not the norm. Um, so how do you handle that with her? Um, so with Chloe, we do fifty fifty custody with her dad. So. Just by nature, I mean, she's used to having groups, um, periods of time where mom isn't there, that she's mm-hmm. at dad's house. And so she's been been used to that for as long. I mean, it's all that she knows. Right. So that has helped in Yeah, a that's sense. helpful because that's what she's used to. Yeah. And so you're able to travel usually during that time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like right now are days that um, it's her dad's day. So I'm able to pop over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And not lose a day with her. But she she understands. And she is also like, it's so adorable because she'll tell her friends sometimes. She's like, my mom's on Big Squad. Oh. I'm like, oh my God. She's like, she's, so she's so she's proud. proud. Yeah. yeah. She's proud. And I know that even removing the guilt of not being able to be there all the time, I 100% know that I am creating mm-hmm. like this foundation for her to have strength and independence and right. confidence. Yes. And give her all the things that I needed when I was her age. Right. So I'm able to be there enough to hold her at night and shower her with love and mm-hmm. be there when she needs me, even if I'm not at like I had had to miss her ballet recital, mm-hmm. but she knows that mom is still there. Right, right, and she understands the sacrifices. And I looked at my mom. You know, she had me really young, and um, that independence. I mean, I feel like that's really strong for young girls to know that they don't really need to depend on anyone. They're smart and they're beautiful, and they can create on their own. Um, and I'm trying to teach my children the same thing in independence and they're so sweet, you know, and they do, they look at you and, and they're proud. And sometimes I'm just working endless hours in my office and they'll come in with a little plate with a sandwich and some oh, chips and they're so like, sweet. we can take a break just to eat a little something mom. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't, you know, my mom heart just explodes, but they pay attention and they recognize it because they also know that. I'm there for them with all these other things. And if I'm still working in the office at that hour, they're paying attention to it. Yeah. They're constantly watching what we're doing. So, yeah, I mean. I mean, we have to work. We're not just, we can't just right. live on a commune in the forest, right. just like frolicking <laughs> in the mushrooms. I mean, I will that would sign be nice. me up. <laughs> yeah. I wish, but uh-huh. it's, it's just not the case. It's not the reality. Yeah, and we exactly. just do what we can. I mean, I take her camping all the time. I load up on as much time as the two of us like as I load up on as much time as I possibly can give her Mm -hmm. and I just I just do my best and that's all all I can ever do yeah well you're doing a phenomenal job at it and you know with your career I mean what what advice would you have for other women who maybe they're a single mom um and their goal is to do things. Cause I feel like one thing I've also, I've gotten the question often is, can you do both? And that's always been an interesting question to me. I've, 
had a lot of conversations with moms who feel they can only be a mom. Hmm. And that, and and I get it. Being yeah. a mom is a full-time job. Full-time. It is so much work. But then they have their own creative side and goals that they want to fulfill that they feel that they can't do it, that they have to be one or the other. If I have a goal but I'm a parent, there's no way that I'm going to be able to to accomplish that. Um, I mean, what what advice would you say if someone was asking you that? Well, I think everyone's situation is so different. And if there is a mom who really feels like this is all I can give right now is to be here, be present with my child. I'm going to dedicate the next few years to being a mom. Like, good for – like, amazing. Right. Good for you. Like, do it. You'll know – with your own intuition, like when it's time or if you have time to be able to dedicate to um, a side hustle or a passion project. There's also some, I mean, some of my friends, they just, they think that they can't do it. And it's like, hold on a second, like remove yourself from those thoughts and step back and really look at it. When I bought my house, I didn't, I was like, there's no, there's no way I can, what do you mean buy a house? I can't, that's Mm -hmm. scary and expensive and all these things by myself, no way. But that's that narrative, that um, subconscious like insecurity in me. Mm-hmm. When I and I caught that, I said, "Hold on a second, let's just put it on paper." So if you you know you have a have a kid and you have a passion and you want to want to think about exploring it, I mean, just take give yourself maybe a little more credit. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Right, like one hundred percent, because you. So many times, like, you don't even know what you're capable of. Right. Because you're so – we're so stuck in the the present, like, fears and logistics and, and bills and all that all that stuff that can so understandably get in the way and scare you. And it's scary to go and start something new. So scary. But yes. what – I mean, what I would recommend is affirmations, mm-hmm. looking at yourself in the mirror and – really being able to connect with yourself and say like, all right, girl, we got this. Like, what Mm -hmm. can we do? Can I give myself um, to this project? If you can't, then you can't. And that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. You're giving yourself to a human being that so desperately needs you. Right. Absolutely. And I feel like, um, you know, what I've learned is anytime I'm thinking of something and if it's scaring me, it's probably going to work out. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've learned to go go with that fear because I'm like, okay, it's scaring me because it's challenging me. Yeah. Um, but when it's scary and it's not handed to you, you almost push harder for it to be successful. And in, when you have a passion for, for a goal, like my mentality is I refuse to let this fail. Mm. But I also don't beat myself up if it does fail, you know. So it's having those, comp- you know, just conversations with yourself to say yeah. like it's going to be okay either way because there's times I've done projects and I've worked really really hard. I mean, I had one that I was working on for like two years, an adolescent program during COVID, and so it was just drawn out process. And I realized, you know what? Actually, I don't think that this is for me. <laughs> like I'm, I'm just going to stick with working with adults. It's my specialty, um, and it was okay to just walk away from it and not keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. However, I always don't want to have the what if, mm-hmm. you know. Right. I rather try, and if it fails, it fails, and I okay, close that door and do something different. But what if I would have started a rehab program? I was passionate about helping people. I would have paid it, and I'm so glad that I did because it's helped thousands of individuals. Um you know, but I, it's for moms, I feel like it's hard for – it's that mom guilt that sinks in and can I accomplish my goals and my dreams? And it's like you absolutely can. How old were you when you first bought your house? Um, oh, I'm 36 now. I got it when I was 34. <laughs> I'm like, hold on a second. My math, 33, 34, 2019. 2019. That's amazing. So all that hard work. Yeah. And this is following um, me leaving my daughter's dad and which at that point, um, financially very comfortable and it was scary to to leave. And I'm like, hold on a second. I'm, my entire lifestyle is going to change. And like, I felt 
it, I don't know. It was just, it was scary and I was really getting in my own way. And it wasn't until I was able to take a step back and say, oh, oh, I got this. Like, mm-hmm. hold on a second. What are we going to do? Um, I know that I'm completely capable to create whatever life that I want. I've done it before. Mm-hmm. I just lost myself for a little bit. Right. And I just started doing things that lit me up again, that mm-hmm. gave me like, wh- how can I reconnect with myself in order to get that confidence back? Right. I was out in nature constantly. It was like, this mm-hmm. makes me feel good. This gives me a connection. This makes me like have that light, that fire is going. Right. So I just kept doing more of that. And then the universe started rewarding, rewarding mm-hmm. that, I think. And then you get your own house and it's like, okay, everything's going to change. Did it change a lot? Yeah. It did. Yeah, it did. How so? Um, so when I got my house, what, what actually set everything in motion, when I got laid off from my job um, at the Today Show, they gave all of us – I mean, it was such a – I loved working there. It was a great job. Um, the perks of working for a giant corporation versus being self-employed. I mean, 401k, insurance, all the things. Mm -hmm. But when they laid us off, we got a big severance package. And I looked at that check and said, this is my down payment on a house. And when I made that scary choice, because it it was scary, I'm like, wait, but I don't have a job. Why am I just going to give all of this away? Um, When I decided, I was like, I trust that this money will come back to me. Mm. So I – Literally, the exact amount that my severance check was my down payment on the house. Wow. And when I made that decision to just surrender and trust and believe in myself, mm-hmm. I get a call from Big Squad. And it was one-to-one, the payment from that job and the payment from my severance. It, like, replaced it immediately. Wow. That's crazy. I could not believe it. Yeah. I could not believe it. And I was like, oh, because I made I made this scary choice, one that I didn't want to make. But I was I, – it's like the universe really has your back. And I mean, whatever whatever anyone wants to believe in, God, faith, like whatever, whatever you look – whatever your North Star is, mm-hmm. like you got to have a North Star. Right, right. And you have to have that faith that it's going to – be okay and work out. Yeah. So it was Bake Squad, the first show you did, and then when was Cake Boss? Before Cake that? Boss, yeah. Cake Boss was a long time ago, um, 2013. It was Next Great Baker. It was a baking competition that I won. I actually tried three years to get on that show. And then following Next Great Baker, I went to produce the subsequent series or season and another show, and then I got on Cake Boss. It's been like a – little journey in yeah. the TV world. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the house changed a lot for me because it showed me, it's like, whoa, okay, this actually worked. My faith worked and mm-hmm. it gave me so much confidence. And I was like, hell yes, I just bought this house for myself and my daughter. And it just like lit me up. Then I started renovating my house and tearing down walls and teaching mm-hmm. myself how to build furniture and <laughs> now, like, my collection of power tools, you would be so oh, impressed. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like you never know. And, and a couple months before that, I was feeling like everything was just, like, I was incredibly depressed and mm-hmm. scared. And right. everything just sucked. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it can change so quickly. It can. It can change so fast. And it's crazy how it's like you can have all these things going for you. And on the outside, people think, like, Wow. You know, Mm -hmm. she's done this, done that. It's like everyone's still internally dealing with their own demons. Yeah. And depression and fear, you know, and that's what I love having these conversations too is because I feel like people feel alone in situations because, and I get it, nobody wants to go air their dirty laundry out there and, you know, put themselves on front street, but we're human and we go through stuff too and yeah. life's hard, you know, and it's it's not all just butterflies and rainbows and I feel like a lot of people look at other people and think that's what their life is and then they feel lost and alone yeah, with their own stuff. Comparing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's like it doesn't matter 
you know, what someone's done or accomplished and not just look at that. It's like there's still a journey behind it to get to where you are and there's still struggles through it regardless of what it may look like, all the success that somebody has had, you know? Totally. And that's fun. I mean (laughs) – perfect for a project junkie is to get a house and be able to just knock right. walls down and create furniture. I mean, it looks adorable. Thank you. You're I'm very gar- proud of it. Yes. That garage that you've converted. Yeah. I've been working on that for the past year. And when I got the house, this, the garage, I mean, it was falling apart. Mm-hmm. Ceiling was falling out, mold everywhere. Uh, the whole thing, it was basically like I w- would joke and say, you know, I wish this would just like get struck by lightning. <laughs> it would ma- make a lot more sense if it just burned down. But I would be heartbroken now if that happened. So please right. don't. But please don't. I'm We're not going to put that, that in the there. universe. Um, no, but I started working on it little by little. And, you know, I was so overwhelmed with how much work that needed to be done. I said, okay, you know what? Here's one wall that does not have holes in it. So I'm mm-hmm. going to prime this one wall. So I moved everything out. I primed that one wall. And I was like, wait, hold on. That wall doesn't have any holes in it either. And so I just started a little little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. I was like, let me just redo this. I'm going to just focus on this one room right here, which is my studio now. And just gave myself time. And that gave me like the space to really understand like, what what do I want to create for myself? The same way with my career, with how do I want to, in life, like, how do I want to feel in life? Like, I, I stood inside that bare, disgusting space and said, what do I want to create in here? And how do I want this place to feel? Mm-hmm. And I started with the feeling and then backed into it on t- more of a, okay, how can I actually make this happen? Right. And it's incredible. When I go in there now, like, I was like, oh, my God, I, I made this. Mm-hmm. And that is that is your space. Yeah. Now you really look from- at it. And you've really created that yeah. space. Yeah, and it's from like that. thrifted and salvaged materials, built materials. Like I'm not just going in there throwing a ton of money at something for it to get fixed. Like every single thing in there I built with my own two hands. I love that. So Did you take like what, work uh, – what is it? Wood shop. Wood shop. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. I remember with, with the cake, you had built that. Yes, the folding board. Yes, the folding board. So yeah. like that creativity, that's one thing I can't do. I can be very creative, but I cannot build. You'd any, be surprised. Oh, maybe I could. Yeah. I just, I can't even draw. I'm not even crafty. Like <laughs> Drawing is hard. Really hard. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. It just finally has like clicked with me in the past couple of years. Like, oh, okay. So I can, I can draw a little bit. Uh-huh. But the building, I definitely give that to my grandmother and my mom. I mean, my mom is a single mom too. She's very um, just independent and resilient. And my grandmother is 75 replacing siding on her house oh my gosh yeah wow oh yeah so you definitely get it from them yeah it's a mix of like necessity and you know liking to learn new things also being cheap Mm -hmm. (laughs) like why am I gonna pay someone when I can do it myself that's how one of my best friends is she's like she's like the handyman you know she'll she'll show men up she goes oh I will show you how to do that yeah my boyfriend loves it he's like he's not intimidated by it at all he's like oh about you. Yeah. <laughs> that's hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you can you can build that yourself. Yeah, that's that's super cool. Um, what goals do you have for yourself moving forward in your career? Do you have anything yes. new and exciting coming? Or? I do. Oh, cool. Since I started saying no to a bunch of projects that I didn't want to do, it's mm-hmm. opened up the just the drawing board. Mm-hmm. Like, well, what do I want to do? Mm-hmm. And I've been doing more TV. I filmed a show over the summer that's coming out in December. Um, it's a new Food Network show um, oh, called cool. The Elf on the Shelf. Sweet oh, showdown. Oh, cool. How fun. I know. And I'm, it's my first judging job. Um, five episodes. And I just filmed last week with them um, a digital companion where it's just me sharing some family-friendly recipes. And it was so it was so fun. Um, just... I like being on camera. I like – Yeah. It's the Leo in me. I don't know. Uh-huh. I've, I've wanted sisters. to be an actress. Yes. Yes. Since I was a kid. I just – I like it. Yeah. Um, so we have some shows coming out and I've been working this entire year on a product line and a baking kit. So Ooh. yeah, we'll be launching both in middle of November. Oh my goodness. I am excited. Yeah. How fun. I know, I'll send you one. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Yes. I am working on, um, I haven't announced it yet, but hopefully January we will be. So 
we will be sharing our ideas back and forth yes. and our creative stuff. That is awesome. That's exciting. I'm excited. So you will be judging this new show. Yes. That's cool. I know. It was different. Um, so different. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, so I can just show up. <laughs> I can just show up and I get now I get to eat yes. other people's stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I loved it though because I I empathize with them. I've been there. Right. I've competed on these shows yes. before. Yes. I've been in their shoes. So to stand and be a judge, I mean, I'm not. It takes a lot of um, a lot of guts to be able to put yourself on the line like that mm-hmm. with like the competitors, right? Competing in these competitions, getting on TV, like cameras all are all around you. Like it's not an easy thing, and people mm-hmm. want to be keyboard warriors and sit at home like, oh, you suck. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not. No, they're really – it's it is a lot to put yourself through. So right. I um, am very empathetic with with all the teams and, yeah. I mean, a huge champion of them. I think it's so rad that they're yes. coming out, putting themselves on the line mm-hmm. and, and sharing their amazing – they're so talented. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, sharing I'm their work with us. Being on the other side of it not mm-hmm. have the spotlight on you like, oh, gosh, better get this right, not do anything wrong. And yeah. Like, how fun. That's exciting. Well, I can't wait. And that comes out in uh, December? November. November. Tw- oh, I should know this. Mid-November. November, November, December or something. Yeah. Okay. It comes out in the middle of November. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we cannot wait to see that. And I am very proud of you. Thank you so much, Ashley, for coming out here. Um, if people want to stay in line in the loop with all the amazing things that you are doing and everything that's um, coming up, how do they find you? Instagram at Sugar Monster. Sugar underscore monster with two R's. The regular sugar monster is still taken. It's a ghost account and I cannot get it. (laughs) Instagram, if you are listening, we need to get rid of that account. Seriously. Um, And then my website, Sugar Monster Suites. Um, I have a newsletter there. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking forward to the next year of like getting more into products and more into teaching and doing some courses. And I mean, my ultimate goal right now is to have a summer camp. Ooh. I want to be able to bring kids together, encourage them to find their tribe, their creative tribe. What do you like to do? Because it, when I finally found my focus and where to put all my energy, that's when my life completely changed for mm-hmm. the better. I felt I found people. I found like my my crew. I didn't feel so right. alone. And right. I want to be able to get have that create that foundation for kids. I love that. That's exciting. Yeah, well, keep me posted because I will send my kids to that yes. camp for need sure. Your help with that. <laughs> yes, so fun. Well, thank you, Ashley. It's been a pleasure, and um, I look forward to everything that's coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Your studio is so beautiful. Thank you. You're so beautiful. You're so sweet. And you're such an inspiration, truly. Thank you. I appreciate you. 